So this is obviously your third collaboration with uh, with Tim. Um, what is it about him, as just as a filmmaker, that keeps bringing you back? And, and everyone, I mean, so many people that work with him tend to, to work with him on numerous occasions. There must be something about him that, that makes people just want to keep collaborating. I mean, it's, it's going to sound cheesy, but it's really, you really feel like you're part of the of a family. Uh, it's it's always uh, just everything is quite simple and and Tim is so full of heart you know he's so passionate and it's just it's so wonderful to you know be on set and have a nice atmosphere and there's a healthy collaboration. I'm going to begin, uh, guys, by asking. I mean, it's a question you've probably been asked a lot today, but welcome to the press junket scene. Uh, but what it was like working with with Tim Burton on this project because I mean he's a real master of filmmaking. He's. He's just incredible and he has such a talent and I think that since we got to work with him on our first film it could be intimidating and it was at first scary but once you got to know him I think a couple days I think of just seeing him a lot it became really natural and he's a really lovely person as well mm. and it was very just supportive. very very helpful. He helped I, us a lot. I think he was very understanding of the fact that it was our first film and it was just really lovely that we got to work with such an incredible director yeah. for our mm. first film. Well, I um, cried a lot during this. Every time you did. Oh, Dumbo good for you, flew, man. I just started crying. Oh, lovely. And I was wondering um, <laughs> if, because I'm sure, I'm assuming you've seen it. Yeah. Uh, and if, if you, can you get taken I, away by the Not as much, because yeah. I saw Behind the Veil. You yeah. know what I mean? I was there every day, so, so not as much. But I, I did feel the stirrings of emotion <laughs> <laughs> the first time Dumbo took flight. It's very magical. And if you have any kind of a kid still alive in you, I think it is potentially even as a, as a grown man, a, a moving experience. It's cool to hear, man. Mm. But has any of the, the magic of cinema been lost slightly from when, when you work no, in the industry? So not at all. It's only increased. My appreciation for it has increased. And mm -hmm. uh, boring things like, you know, the amount of work I, I, I know from the inside uh, it takes to bring a story to life. Um, but I still, I still have that detachment and, and that access to the suspension of disbelief that I always had. And as I said, it's probably increased through the years. I, I thankfully, because I love going to the cinema and I love films, so, so no. I think I cried every single time Dumbo flew into the air. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> but um, what's it like for you watching those moments back? Because obviously, that, that, that we could, they could probably can get hold of a real flying elephant, so that's obviously all done uh, yeah. through special effects. So when you watch those moments back, can you get caught, quite caught up in them in the same way an audience member could? Totally. Mm. I mean, you know, I, I saw the movie a year, a year ago. Go back to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the movie a week ago, mm. and um, I was completely blown away. Uh, I, I cried. I, I, I never cried when, you know, when I'm in a movie, but there I was, like, completely transported. Uh, you know, when the mother and Dumbo were separated, it was just so beautiful and emotional and... Oh, it's gorgeous, yeah. <laughs> I mean, even some of the most experienced actors in the world still have uh, struggled with the, 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 when it comes to like doing stuff on green screen and special effects. How did you guys fare when you had to obviously communicate with Dumbo? What, what were you using in his place and, and how did you find that kind of acting in front of something that wasn't really there? Well, I mean, something was there. Um, <laughs> um, or someone. His name was Ed. I never get his last name right. Ed Osmond. Ed okay. Osmond. Um, and no, he, he was in a green suit on all fours. And he was walking around. He was brilliant. He did a really yeah. good job. He was so great. But um, no, I wouldn't say it was too hard. Sometimes it was hard because it was very um, specific where we had to stroke him because of all the CGI and where Dumbo was actually going to be. Um, but I think they made, most of the time they made it very easy for us. Mm. And then what's it like being in a, in a Tim Burton film? I mean, he, he kind of transports the viewers to these kind of other worlds. Yeah. Uh, what's mm. it like being on that set? Because I know Lovely. the whole thing was, was, it sounds like the set was kind of incredible. To yeah, it was extraordinary. Did it feel like you were in a Tim Burton film when you were shooting it? Or was uh, it yeah, just by virtue of him being around as well. Mm. Uh, both by virtue of him being there, of course, and, and just his energy is a very energy, a very easy energy to get caught up in. And it's it, he's very infectious. He's incredibly creative, incredibly frenetic, and a little bit like a mad scientist. And but also the sets that he had built that were born of his imagination. The production design was so extraordinary and the sets were so elaborate and so kind of um, involving, you know? I mean, really the, the, the reality that was offered up by having anything that was in, within our reach, anything that was within our proximity was, was made, was practical, all the tents, all the, all the circus performers. They had like 100, 150, I don't know how many circus performers from all four corners of the globe. I mean, the experience was really, really astonishing and every day going to work, 
was just a, an absolute joy. Because I have a feeling I saw yesterday on the red carpet with um, with Colin uh, Farrell, and oh, you two seem to be getting on really well as well. I mean, I've just interviewed him. He's such a great guy. To have him as your on-screen yeah. dad yeah. must have been a great help as well. That was brilliant. Um, no, he, he Colin was also very, very supportive um, of us and because it's our first film we didn't always get everything right and I would say not just Colin but everyone was very understanding of that, like mm. Nico said, but um, no, yeah, working with Colin as our dad was very fun and we also corrected him a lot. Um, <laughs> we get a lot of like marks, yeah, like he's like, on the wrong get mark. get on your mark, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> he was a great on-screen dad. Mm. Oh. And did you have to do any sort of circus training for this? Because they were quite, it's very small little details, isn't it? It's the way people present themselves. It's the way they, the, the performers were, it's quite sort of, the sort of nuances to their physicality. Uh, did you have to sort of practice those to just make sure you had the kind of stature and the, the physicality right? Yes. I mean, I trained with several people for the posture. I, um, I trained with Fran Janes. She, um, she, we had a few ballet sessions and it's to find, you know, like just like for the hand and it's all, you know, even the little finger is very important. And, um, and Tim, you know, kept saying, you know, she's like a silent movie star. So it's kind of like you just have that posture to present to the world and it's, it's kind of a mask as well. Uh, and of course, I trained uh, with circus performers uh, uh, because my character is an aerialist. So that was hardcore, you know, training and to build the, you know, the core, and then to, you know, little by little to, you know, go up there. You need lots of training and and um, and dedication. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, people who work with him tend to work with him again. He has yeah. that kind of, that, I mean, even, even in this, you know, Danny DeVito, Michael Keaton, yeah. Eva. Um, what is it about him then, just as a, as a person? I mean, I, would feel, I would feel a great loyalty to him as well mm -hmm. as a person. And I, I don't know him very well, but I got to know him a little bit through the making of this film. And I would have such a deep affection for him. You know, he's incredibly uh, pure, you know, a storyteller and somebody who, you know, of course, he's making a film this size and he's he's made very big films. And so I'm sure economics come into it. I'm sure he's told about bottom lines and shit like that. But he doesn't live in that world. He's he's a very pure storyteller. He's somebody who's still operating from the power of his imagination. And uh, and I think being close to that degree of purity and that degree of wonder and magic that Tim just exudes is is a tonic, you know, it's a tonic to be around that. And so I, I would love to work with them again if I ever got the chance. And one of the, I'm assuming one of the other sort of challenges was the accents. How did you both fare with those? We both just kind of, I, I don't know how you had an American accent. You were a lot better than that. <laughs> I, I remember watching no, the film. We, <laughs> we went, we had a dialect coach called Rasheen yeah. and she, but we both kind of had American accents anyway. I don't know why. I, don't know. I watched a lot of American TV. Fine, I think I've <laughs> lived in LA for a year, so probably off that. But um, we both just went into it with American accents, but Roisin was always there to support oh. us with everything. Yeah. It was always the mummers that got us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And here I'm about to sort of dif dis dispel all the kind of magic of Disney, but I was wondering how you shot the sequences when you were when you were f on on Dumbo when you were flying Dumbo. When I was flying Dumbo, it was uh, it was a kind of mechanical ball, uh, you know, that goes up in the air and kind of moves right left. Mm. Uh, but there is yeah, there is no no head. I remember well, there was no trunk, or, and you just feel a bit like, ooh, what is it going to look like? I feel a bit stupid here. <laughs> but no, you know, you have faith in, in Tim and the CGI people who are magicians, and it's, the result is just spectacular. Because, I mean, I've looked at sort of like who you've worked with. I mean, you've worked with most of the great living filmmakers, but is there any one left on your kind of wish list, though, someone that you still haven't quite yet been able to work with? I mean, no, I've, 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 yeah, I've worked with some handy filmmakers mm -hmm. and I've been very lucky that way. And oh, there's so many filmmakers that are coming up and that are still there. And P.T. Anderson, I think there's no better filmmaker alive than Paul Thomas Anderson. And I'd love to work with him. Is this anyone really? But I'm going to work with a gentleman by the name of Koganada in, in New York in May and June, and he's an extraordinary filmmaker. And I think it's only a second feature. So, and I've worked with some directors on their first feature. So there's always, you know, there's always incredible voices coming coming up. Because yeah, Nico, obviously, you mentioned living in, in LA, of course, having mm -hmm. parents in the industry. Yeah. Has this just been a natural kind of um, it's something you've always wanted to do from a really, really young age? Just the idea of getting into movie making like your parents? Not really. Um, I didn't really want to be an actress until Dumbo. I think two weeks since we started, then I was like, oh, this is what I want to do. But I, um, it had never really been anything I considered because I'd always seen like the behind the scenes from my mum and my dad. So I never, I'd never really thought about it. And then once I started for Dumbo, I was like, this is 
what I want to do. So it was kind of natural in that sense, but I wasn't something I was like planned to do since mm. I was really young. And of course, I mean, it'd be natural to go and ask them for kind of techniques and, and, mm. and sort of stuff about the, the industry. But I read one thing that your, your dad taught you a memory trick and how to remember people's names. Yeah. So what is that? Because I honestly forget mm -hmm. everyone's names all the time. So, yeah. So you're meant to, um, you, so you say, hi, my name's blah, blah, blah. Then you get their name. You say it in your head three times. Write it on your, like, trace it on your leg three times. And then apparently that makes you remember it. I don't th know if it works because it, I don't think it's worked for me like on occasion, but I think that's just because I remember the I name. I remember barely anyone's. Yeah, I, I'm really bad at it. So yeah, I. Wait to get my way to get to my age. Yeah, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of tricks that you're meant to use, but I yeah. just that one apparently writing. Or you just get it. to know them. And <laughs> yeah, or you just remember the name. Or that. And I was reading that you sort of overcame a fear of heights for this. And I was wondering, is this one of the perks of this job is trying things and putting yourself in situations that you probably would never otherwise do. No. I, I interviewed um, Ray Fiennes last week and he had to learn ballet and Russian for his most recent movie. And most middle-aged men in England don't just go off and learn ballet. But it's something he had to do for the role. It, it must be one of the great kind of perks of this job. It's just mm. finding yourself in situations and acquiring skills that most people don't get the chance to tell. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it is, this is such a, a wonderful job to explore different worlds and different, you know, uh, I played an astronaut in my last movie. I had to learn Russian as well. Mm. Here I have to play an aerialist, so I get to meet amazing circus performers. And, and I'm terrified of heights. So I was like, oh, Oh my God, I mean, I'm quite masochistic and I, I like, I, you know, I like to, to suffer for a role and go all the way. But that was, uh, that was kind of a challenge and I, I've managed to f face my fear and, and take off and that was kind of wonderful. Because you worked with Guy Ritchie as well recently. Yeah, yeah. What was that experience like? It was great, it was yeah. easy. I had such a fun week with Guy, yeah. yeah. It was a fun character. I don't know if it'll be fun to watch, but it was fun to do. <laughs> I'm not sure if you've been briefed to give the right answer here and just say Dumbo, but I was wondering what your favourite Disney movie was when you were... No, I didn't up. see Dumbo when I was a child. Uh, <laughs> no. The Jungle Book. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, that was my favourite one. Yeah. yeah. So, so what do you... I mean, obviously, I, I'm, a, I'm a really big fan of these kind of... these live-action adaptations. I think they're fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I get why some people get a little bit perturbed. I think people... I think people are afraid that, you know, in in revisiting some of this material that it, it almost questions people's youth or the veracity of what someone feels about a particular film. You know, there's there's a lot of nostalgia involved. Um, but I think it's okay. I think to, to retell these stories is fine. I know Disney are trying to make a pile of money, but you have to understand that, yeah, Disney are trying to make a lot of money for sure and do something entertaining. But someone like Tim Burton, not that Tim is averse to making money, but Again, he's at the helm of the film. He has a deep affection for this character and for the purity of, of film and the power of cinema. So that, that's who you're energetically in line with rather mm. than the studio or the money-making thing. You know, we all want the film to do well, but there is a purity of story that, you know, filmmakers are, are striving for. You know, whether it's Ken Branagh in Beauty and the Beast or even Guy Ritchie in, in Aladdin or whatever it may be, they all want to make really good films. Mm. Yeah, and the original's still there if people want to watch it. Of course it, yeah. it is. It doesn't take, it doesn't ruin the original. Never. And I've done a couple of remakes, so I've, you know, I, I think made a couple of enemies. Um, down the road, but uh, but it doesn't ruin the original. It really doesn't. You know, the existence of in, of in revisiting doesn't. And my, my final question is just about working with Colin because I've, I've I've had the pleasure of interviewing him two or three times before, and he is a charming bastard, isn't he? He he's, he seems like a, f a fun person to be around on, on a movie set. Yes, I mean Colin, of course, is a is a, an amazing actor and and also very very down to earth, very very kind, like so kind, a real gentleman. Um, and you know, but Tim always kind of chooses people who are very normal and and you know, not no not actory, no divas or stuff like that. He, yeah, he he surrounds himself uh, with kindness. Just very quickly before I go, what's your what was your favorite Disney movie growing up? Uh, I have to say Dumbo. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yes. Uh, and just very finally, forgetting parents, I mean, what do your friends kind of make of this? I mean, I remember once I scored a penalty at school in a football tournament, and I went to school on the Monday like I own the whole gaff, right? I just mm. walked around like a boss. Um, you guys are in a Hollywood movie. I mean, your friends, I mean, what, what's it been like, kind of like speaking to your friends about this? You must be so excited about them all going to see it as well. Um, I mean, at first, I am, um, the fr my friends, I've been friends with for a very long time, so they took the mick out of me yeah. at <laughs> first. Um, no, but they're all ve they've all been very supportive. They've been like, if I'm like, oh, oh, sorry, I can't do it because I have to go 
and do some ADRs and they're very understanding. <laughs> um, but no, they they definitely tease me on a daily <laughs> basis. <laughs> I don't really get teased. My friends are really supportive and really proud. I'm slightly nervous for them to watch it because it's I'm just terrified. it's like letting my friend <laughs> yeah it's like letting my friends in something that I feel like was just it's like my experience and then I'm sharing it with a lot of people but my friends I'm really nervous them to see it but I mean some of them stalk me I think like the Google alerts are on for my name I think oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah oh my that's God. a thing okay, so we were typing up 500 words BBC which was like a 500 words challenge where you had to write a story and uh, I was walking around and my friend, um, uh, some of my friends were just like, hey Finn, look, and they typed up Finley Hobbins in Google and there was just a picture of me where I look like I'm going to church and they're like, <laughs> <laughs> it was really fun, no. Yeah. Yeah. We'll have to get used to that. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice.